Hi, I'm Rachel Bullman. And I'm Jason Bullman. And we're the Bullmans. We're so excited that you're here. Welcome to our home. And we can't wait to share everything about the craziness of our family, but the awesomeness too. <laughs> We've been married for 12 years. We have seven kids, four that are playing in the other room, one that's gone to be in heaven, and then two on the way. Two, make sure you say that really loud. Two, two. on the way. <laughs> there are twins here. And one of the questions I get asked all the time is, is is it a boy or a girl? And I get to say there are two babies in here and we're gonna keep things even because we right. have two girls, two boys. The force is going to be equal because we're gonna add one to each side. So this is Josephine and Benedict. They're gonna be joining us here in a few weeks. If you see like a foot or a hand make an imprint <laughs> on my dress, it's all fine. But we're so excited to meet them. And I know that it sounds like a lot, that there are four kids running around. There's two more coming. And there are lots of responses that we get to that. But the extreme responses are usually really excited and joining in that joy of us being this beautiful family that love one another. Mm. Or just disbelief that this doesn't really exist. <laughs> that there's no way that we could have all these kids and still enjoy life. But I think we're, we're enjoying it pretty much. Absolutely. <laughs> So our oldest is Gabriel. He's 10 years old and he's really coming into his own as the eldest of his siblings. And he's really gifted with uh, intellect. He just mm. discovered the Rubik's Cube and he never ceases to wow all of our friends and us included. Yeah, I think he can do it now in maybe two, three minutes if it's really, really mixed up really, really well. I like to show him off at parties. We don't even do our own party <laughs> tricks anymore. We just put him in the middle. <laughs> Gabriel, get your Rubik's Cube. So he's really good at it. And then Jeremiah, who is eight years old, he loves soccer, loves playing the drums, and really, he's gonna see this, but he really likes looking good. So <laughs> that's a big deal. His clothes always need to match. His hair has to be perfectly aligned. And Very sophisticated gentleman. Yeah, he really is. Good looking. We're biased. <laughs> then you have Gemma, and she's our fun-loving, completely imaginative <laughs> young lady who is never scared to be the center of attention. She's and she incredible. has hair that we always joke that we're going to put her in a tower, yes. but she could let her hair down too if we <laughs> needed to put her in a tower someday. And I thought she was going to be our leader, right? We thought right. she was going to be the one that kind of ruled the roost. We were until, a little worried about that. Until Abigail came along. So Abigail came along to humble all of us and she is fearless. She's fearless in the way that she plays, she's fearless in the way that she loves, and she's fearless with her laugh. <laughs> it's pretty infectious. And what's so beautiful is that all four of them are super excited to meet their two new siblings, yeah. Benedict and Josephine. They were, the, their reaction was pretty amazing, right? <laughs> it was, it was incredible. There's twins in mommy's belly. Are you being a boy And it's hard to believe that in just a matter of weeks, we're gonna increase our household by 50%. Right. Oh my gosh, okay. So, part of our faith is this openness to life. And I know that sounds kind of strange. What does it look like to be open to life? And are you really opening yourself up to having a gajillion children? <laughs> and really, what it means is that our life is not absent from being afraid. And we're not living a life that we weren't completely shocked when the doctor said, hey, Rachel, there's two in there. He took a really long time when he was looking at the ultrasound. And I asked him, what are you doing? You have to say words, because we're all wearing our masks and he's not saying anything. And finally he said, I had to double check, but I'm pretty sure that there's another baby in there. <laughs> and I said, well, another baby because because like there's been babies before this or like another baby because there's another baby. He said, no, there's there's two in there. And I said, I don't think I said anything. I <laughs> sat there in shock. And um, he asked me if I was going to call Jason and you were at work. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, if I call Jason, he You're... won't be able to work at all for the rest of the day. <laughs> so I think it was Pope Benedict that said, you're not meant for, you know, uh, comfort. comfort, but for greatness. And it's kind of like, 
<laughs> yeah, that's true. But that really, the rubber met the road when, when we discovered. And I think that I sat there for about 20 minutes just like, oh my Lord, what's happening right now? Because, you know, what happens is all of us, we, we tend to think like, oh my gosh, can we do this? Um, you know, can we afford this? Uh, did we make a mistake? You know, all these things come to mind. Yeah, and I, I think for me, whenever we found out, I remember thinking about how, what other people were gonna think about us. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not too long before this, we had actually gone to Disney World and I would take our four kids by myself sometimes, which is always fun in and of itself. And uh, the security guards are always wondering where my husband is. And they're like, so is someone here to help you? And I'm like, nope, it's just, it's just me. But people are shocked by it. And I was worried about our family. I was worried about friends. And I was just worried how people were gonna react to us, that it was gonna make things more difficult to travel. We had had a lot of thoughts about where we were gonna go in the future and about going out to dinner. And now we're like quintessentially the big party. I think whenever we consider the notion of having a big family, you know, sometimes we get a little fearful because we imagine that it's going to impede on my freedom, as if freedom is this t ability to have a freedom from burden, a freedom from any kind of limitation. I think we imagine that in this life somehow we'll achieve this place of autonomy where we can just spontaneously be, have whatever we want and be free from, from any kind of burden. But in reality, freedom in its greatest sense ends up being a freedom for the sake of other people. You know, mankind is relational. I think we all know that, right. you know, uh, we, we all have relationships with other, no man is an island. And so what's so ironic and beautiful is that man really, we only find ourselves and only become fully who we are when we give of ourselves completely. In no relationship to each other. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a wife without you as my husband. Exactly. And we become mother and father in relationship to our children. So it's almost like more of your identity, more of who you are, becomes when you include other people. And you find a lot more freedom in that kind of relationship and in this communication of yourself Right. And I think it makes us more alive, really. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're always constantly trying to have everything that you want, what happens is your focus ends up being on yourself. <laughs> right. Right? And then if you're turned in on yourself all the time, you find yourself quite alone. Versus in the family is this school of self-gift, you know? You find yourself considering other people before yourself, and then there's this beautiful fecundity that comes about. And Instead freedom of really this reigns. Isolation, you know. I think when we get really frustrated with the kids, because, which is not often, just kidding. Probably every day <laughs> we get a little frustrated with something well, that's going do. on. Well, you do. I'm fine. I, right, so. you're totally at peace. Uh, but for me, the human one in this relationship, we get to this point where you're super frustrated with whatever's going on, and I know that when I do it, I've turned in on myself. Like maybe I don't want to have to make pancakes at six o'clock in the morning, <laughs> or maybe I don't want to go and, and help someone get something down because I just got comfortable and it's really hard to get up right now. <laughs> but what I've realized is that in the middle of that frustration, it's really me going, I don't want to do anything for anybody else. I just want to take care of myself. This is what I want to do right now. But my kids and my husband, this life calls us into giving ourselves away for other people and really setting ourselves free from, from a, a cage of isolation, a cage mm -hmm. of being alone, right? Yeah, and what we found is that just doing that right within our family, it actually gives us the freedom then to gift our family to our local community, to our friends, and we become a blessing even for the world. Do you think that you, when you were younger, you would have thought your life would look like this? Absolutely not. <laughs> what did you think you were going to do with your life? Were you gonna... I mean, I grew up in a, in a very loving household. You know, I have one sibling and um, I don't know. I mean, it's still, nevertheless, I think the world sort of, you know, indoctrinates you into what happiness must look like. And personally, in my own experience, I think 
you really have to be, it has to be revealed to you, the greatness of what you're called to in this life. And I don't think, you know, I'm adopted and my parents have, have been divorced and remarried and they, so my family is rather large. When we all get together, there's 50 or 60 people that get together. But I still, I wasn't the girl that, that babysat all the kids in the neighborhood. I was good with kids, but I still didn't imagine myself to be one day with six children of my own or one day wanting to to find like this beauty and staying up too late and with the kids crying and all of these things and, and packing them on my back. I'm definitely that mom that like puts the kid on the back and tries to get everything done. And so I don't think I ever imagined my life like that, but I know that now it's so much more than I thought it was gonna be. My life is so much better than I could have imagined it. I couldn't imagine my life without any one of them. And even now, I can't imagine my life without Benedict and Josephine, even though we haven't technically met them yet. <laughs> you know, when I met Jason, um, one of the stories that always strikes me about the first time we met is that he used to stare at me a lot, like he's doing right now. That's <laughs> but he would stare at me a lot, and it would make me really uncomfortable. And I'd look at him and I'd go, why are you looking at me? <laughs> He'd say, because I think you're beautiful. And I would say, that's weird, stop looking at me. <laughs> and I then, weird yeah, right, right now, stop sorry. doing that. <laughs> so I remember taking that to prayer after a few years after being married, and I felt like he wasn't looking at me like that anymore. And I remember asking the Lord, like, does he look at me like that anymore? Like, has our marriage somehow lost this fire or this passion? And the Lord was like, he looks at you like that all the time, except you believe him now. Like you're okay with him looking at you like that. And so I found comfort in this gaze of love. And that same gaze of love exists with, from our children. Like I wanna be the mom that they see, the mom that even though sometimes I might lose my cool and get impatient, they still come to me to be comforted. But I wanna be the mom that's always the one that they turn to for that comfort, the one that they turn to to know that it's safe here and a safe place. And it's the same thing with, with how I find myself in his gaze. So this invitation that we have between all of us is something that we tell our kids, like this is something for the whole world. We wanna invite everybody mm. into this same gaze of love that we know exists from our love, our love with God, and then that expounds into our children. What it really comes down to is just giving ourselves away for them because Love really isn't love until you give it away. It's true. And it's been such a joy for us. And every week, we're gonna take that invitation that we give to one another and give it to you. But it's still just such a glimpse. It's just a, a moment in time of what's going on at the Bullman house. And sometimes there's crying. That's usually from Jason. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes there's a lot of laughter. There's gonna be some suffering that we're gonna invite you into, I am sure, because at some point they have to make their way out of here. It's true. And that's usually not pleasant. So <laughs> <laughs> that's coming. And we hope that you'll continue on this journey with us because we're gonna come back every week and open the door to our house and hope that you'll come in with us. Thanks so much for joining us, for coming into our home, and we hope that you'll come back every week because we can't wait for you to meet these twins and journey with us as we grow our family and expand them even more. It really is a pleasure. Please pray for us, and we'll pray for you. God, God bless. bless.